Okay. Hello, and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. My name is Bruce Morgan, and I'm Assistant Vice Chancellor for Research Administration at the University of California, Irvine. I'd like to talk a little bit about the Office of Management and Budgets, Administrative Requirements, Cost Principles, and Audit Requirements that was published on December 26, 2013. It's a very long and comprehensive document, so I have some notes over here that I'm going to be referring to from time to time as we go through the circular. These requirements are known by many names, the Omni Guidance, Uniform Guidance, A81, Super Circular. I'm just going to refer to them as the Uniform Guidance for the purpose of this discussion. But no matter what you call them, they can be found in one place, and that is Title II of the Code of Federal Regulations. The purpose of the circular in, in, in the Title II is to combine a number of OMB circulars, in fact, eight OMB circulars, all into this one set of uniform guidance. And there's three circulars included in that that we're all very familiar with, and that's A21, A110, and A133. From a perspective of a research institution, the new regulations really are a mixed bag. There's some good stuff and there's some bad stuff in them. Well, maybe not bad stuff, but other things we would probably have uh, like to have in its place. So research administrators are going to be very well served if they go through these requirements and the uniform guidance very carefully, very, very thoroughly, and they engage with their institutions in that review process. Fortunately, the guidance is pretty well organized and it's divided into various subparts, A through F, and it also has some appendices as well. So I'd like to take a few moments to highlight some of the changes that are in each of these uh, subparts. Keep in mind that this is a huge document. So I'm just going to be brushing the surface on some of these subparts. These are just some of the things that caught my eye as I was reviewing the regulations. So in subpart B, we have, uh, which is general provisions, we have uh, information about the effective date of all of these regulations. And that is going to be December 26, 2014. Now, that's going to be effective for all of the subparts except subpart F, which is the audit requirements. And that's going to become effective on the uh, first fiscal year after the implementation date. So for most of us, on a, uh, certainly those of us who are on a uh, July through June fiscal year period, that's going to be your fiscal year starting July 2015. Also in this section, uh, subpart, we have a section on conflict of interest. And this was somewhat of a surprise because it wasn't in the proposed guidance that was put out by OMB for comment. And this actually requires that institutions report conflicts of interest, actually potential conflicts of interest, back to federal agencies. It also uh, requires that the federal agencies develop policies around conflict of interest. But that's pretty much all it says. And so this is a wide open field with respect to interpreting what all of this means. And likely this is going to result in a number of different policies being promulgated by the various federal agencies. In subpart C, which deals with pre-award requirements, we have uh, some interesting information with regard to notice of funding opportunities. Funding opportunities have to be uh, announced at minimum 60 days before uh, the deadline. There is an exception process, though, with, for the federal agencies, so they can have as minimum as little as 30 days, but for the most part, it's going to be 60 days, which I think is good. Hopefully, that will uh, help us in. Uh, and there will be less surprise announcements in the future. Also, um, in this section, in this subpart, there's a section on information contained in the federal award. And this requires federal agencies to incorporate the general terms and conditions either directly into the award document or uh, by reference. Interestingly enough, though, the research terms and conditions are not specifically referenced in 
the uniform guidance. So there's question mark as to exactly what this will all mean for research universities. Subpart D talks about uh, post-award requirements for financial and program management. And section uh, 200.303 talks about internal controls. And specifically, recipients have to implement internal controls that uh, are consistent with and comply with the standards for internal control in federal government. That's also known as the Green Book. Now, the Green Book is currently under revision, so that is a big question mark on internal controls. What's currently available for uh, universities uh, through the Green Book versus what's going to be uh, available in the future. So we'll have to see what uh, happens there. But likely it's going to create additional burden and uh, additional uh, challenges for universities. 